Hey guys, now let's look at the basics of constructing a form. Forms are to be enclosed within a form tag with an attribute action that points to the script that should be run when a form is submitted. We don't yet have the tools to process the forms, but in later tutorials we'll use a backend server language to do so. So firstly, before we jump into our input fields, we need to make labels for them. To do so, we use the label tag. We specify which form it's for with the for attribute, which is to match with the ID in our input tag. Now when users click on the label, the focus will be placed on the corresponding input. Now the input tags are where the users can actually input their data. There are lots of different ways that we can obtain information from the user. The types of inputs are defined by the type attribute. Additionally, we use the name attribute so that we can retrieve the input data once the form is handled. So for a standard text box, we would just use type equals text. For password, where the characters are hidden, we have password. For checkbox, we use checkbox. And for any radio buttons, we use radio. So this is what a form with one input would look like. So we have our label here. And we can see it's for first name, which matches the ID right here, first name. And we have our name attribute, which specifies how the variable that the input will correspond to. And then we have our type equals text, which is our normal text box. Now let's look at our playground. So we have our form tag opening here. And then for action, we're just going to leave that blank since we don't know how to handle it yet. And then we're going to have our first name, last name, and email, which are all going to be of type text. And then we're going to have our input and verify password, which will be of type password. And then lastly, we're going to have a radio button that specifies the gender. So this is going to be for gender, and it's going to be of type radio. Now let's try opening this up. So we have our first name here. So we can type some email here. And for our password, you can see that it's going to be hidden. And for our radio boxes, notice that we can't specify more than one. Now the reason that we couldn't specify multiple radio buttons was that our name attribute all had the same value. So if I were to change one of these, then we would be able to select more than one. Now if you want a bigger submission box, such as the one where you put an about me section, we use the text area tag. This is basically a large multi-line text box. The two attributes are rows and columns, which specify the text box dimensions. To make a drop down select box, we use the select tag. And within the select tag, we have the option tag to specify each option. If we want to group related objects within our drop down menu, we can use the opt group tag. So here's our select, and then we have our opt group. So this would have our label Swedish cars, and then we would have our options, and then we would do the same here for German cars. And lastly, the most important button is the submit. So all we have to do is input and then type equals submit. So after this button is clicked, the page is redirected to wherever the action attribute points to. This will usually be a script at the top of our page that handles our submission. And this is usually done in a back end server language. We'll get to this in later tutorials. So in our playground, we have our label for the about me. And this is going to be a text area. So it's going to be a big space for the user to type in. And then we're going to have a section for the birthplace of our user. And it's going to be a drop down select menu. We're going to have North America, Asia, and Europe in their own opt group sections. And we're going to have values within these. And lastly, we have our submit button down here. Now let's look at how this looks. So now you can see this text area here with the about me and then the user can type in however much text he wants here and he can also make this bigger or smaller and for a birthplace right here we have our nicely divided continents now I know this all looks bare bone and black and white but in the next tutorial series we'll learn CSS to spice this up a bit